none of their pushbacks are rooted in logic, right? None of their ideologies are rooted in logic. And that's why they never really can do anything except for, you know, throw out very liberally these names like narcissist or sexist, fat phobic, um, racist, you know, I've been called all the isms. And, you know, essentially, the problem is, is that really everything I've said has aged really well, especially with the COVID stuff, like you can watch any of my viral videos about me pushing back on the COVID narrative. And really, all of those things have been proven true. Um, Canada just continues to get more communist. And um, I know they've come out with more rules for podcasters, like saying that you have to register with the government. Uh, so what is that going to do? Or what do you anticipate that doing to your freedom to speak? Yeah, like clearly there's an agenda uh, there. Bill C-11 was passed not too long ago. And, you know, it was shown initially as this, you know, really... Uh, innocent uh, attempt to just protect Canadian and Indigenous content, right? But we know from, you know, our government and their agenda that it's going to go further than that. Really, this is going to be the first step. And they're just really um, laying out some first steps that seemingly are harmless to begin with, um, but obviously have a plan to further and further regulate really essentially people like me who are speaking out against the quote unquote conventional narrative right um and it's actually a really scary thing uh it's not scary yet really they're just trying to regulate some of the bigger platforms that host podcasts like mine um but we know this is uh this is how it all starts it's you know two steps forward and then you know there's some pushback and then one step back and then two steps forward one step back. So it'll be really interesting to see how this all plays out. But one of the reasons why I'm here, staying in Canada, uh, and still being a resident, even though I could move is because, you know, we have a bit of a war to fight, um, uh, at least initially, and I think it's only going to get more and more intense. So I'm here for it. And uh, I think at the end of the day, the people have the power. So we have to all band together and stand up. And we have to learn to have the kahunas to say no. To so kind of Jordan Peterson, uh, is obviously a Canadian who just got his Instagram account shut down. Um, but obviously, there's also been a lot of just social, um, you know, backlash and pushback. And, you know, uh, in my hometown in Canada called Edmonton, Alberta, at one point, I had a viral video, and there was a petition to get my Instagram account shut down. There were university professors that were going on popular uh, shows to debunk my videos. Uh, one of the University of Calgary professors did a, I believe it's called a dissertation on my social media presence and essentially calling me a narcissist and delusional in uh, some of my messages. So there's definitely been pushback uh, and it's not for the faint of heart. We recently had a death threat that we had to uh, report to the police up here. Yeah, it can get pretty intense. Right. And one of those name names that you end up getting called in the mix um, is far right. I mean, I've been called far right yet. I'm always willing to have anyone from any thought on my show. Anyone is welcome here. Like I'm a firm believer of free speech and being a voice for the voiceless. And so anyone is welcome on my show, but you end up getting called like far right because it's really the only the people on the right that are willing to talk and debate. Um, although, I mean, I have had exceptions that have been on the show and I, and I welcome that. Um, we don't all have to think the same. In fact, I, I don't think we should. I, I encourage debate and discussion. Um, but I, I mean, I, th that's another thing is I saw that thrown out for you too. And I'm like, I, I've listened to some of your things and I don't, I don't even really see a political affiliation, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, where is that coming from? Do you think this is just a, another lazy thing they call people? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because the people that call me far right actually have no idea about my true ideological perspective. Because like you said, I don't go on and I don't really even talk about it. I talk about issues that I don't really concern myself with what team I'm on. And I think that's really important for you know, the awake community, as I call it to hear is that like, don't just, you know, make up your mind and jump to a team or a side uh, emotionally, because that is what the side that we often criticize. Those are the people that push back on us. They often are emotional in their thinking and not logic based enough. And we don't want to succumb to that in the awake community. I think one of the major factors was I was depressed and anxious and I was lost and hopeless. I was not feeling good. I had no energy. I thought I had chronic fatigue syndrome and I did what you were supposed to do. You're supposed to go to 
into the Western medical clinical establishment and go see the professionals, right? And they're supposed to be the ones that are there to help you when you're feeling that way, when you're mentally and physically sick. And when I sat in there as a young, you know, early 20 year old, I was really only prescribed, you know, it, there was no questions about, you know, how is your sleep? How's your circadian rhythm? Is it regulated? Let's check your biological markers and see if you have any nutrient deficiencies. Let's ask about your relationships and like, do you have meaning and purpose in your life? Do you, do you believe in a greater or higher intelligence? Like, do you put your feet on the ground every day? Do you get sun in your eyes every day? Do you get, let's check your vitamin D. Like there was all these things. They didn't ask about my diet. They didn't ask if I was moving my body every day. And some of those questions might sound ridiculous for a, a doctor to ask, but these are the fundamentals of health. And I didn't get asked that once. All I was really prescribed was some SSRIs, benzodiazepines, ADHD drugs, and I thought, and some talk therapy. And I thought, so I have to go see a psychotherapist and just take a pill for the rest of my life just to feel good? Something's wrong here. I don't know where it came from, but I had the ability to question that. And when I questioned that, I ended up realizing something's wrong here. So I took it into my own hands, just like you mentioned in my bio. I went on a relentless and obsessive journey of really uh, understanding human optimization and how do you actually create a good life. And it was things that I found in a bookstore. You know, it was stoic philosophy. It was just learning about the basics of human physiology, holistic wellness and lifestyle and learning about how food works and affects your body, how to heal your gut, how to lower your inflammation. And these are things that the Western clinical establishment just never really even seemed to be concerned with. And with all due respect to them and in their defense, they don't learn about these things. So that was my first kind of, I guess, draw towards being anti-establishment, it ended up saving my life, to be honest. So I was then more prone going forward to everything I would hear from the media, the governments, the corporations, the school system, just the conventional narrative out there. I questioned and I, to this day, talk about how that is one of the biggest factors in how we win in our lives and business. I mean, we have, and, and I'm guilty too, years ago of this instead of relationships, we have these, this thing called situationships. <laughs> and, and somehow I got sucked into that uh, culture um, years ago. Not, not happy about that. But um, what do you think that that is doing to things as far as like, they're, like everything's so casual, like people aren't really truly connecting? Yeah, one of the things that I really include in my message when it comes to how to achieve your highest quality of life and highest potential is you've got to look at what is ancestrally consistent with when you look at most of human history, how have we lived? And one of the, the lowest hanging fruits in terms of things that you can do to achieve your highest potential, to, to win, like I talk about in life, which is just living your highest quality of life, to find out what you're optimizing for in your life and align with it. One of the best things you can do is look at what have we been doing for human history, right? Because for almost all of human history, it was having a really strong sense of meaning that was found in deep and loving and connecting relationships, okay? And building a family. So, you know, it's this progressive movement that is trying to sell us this lie that we're somehow better off by destroying the nuclear family, destroying gender roles, destroying uh, even gender in general, uh, destroying what it means to be a man, destroying what it means to be a woman. And we're really trying to just like break this entire idea down because somehow they think that that's actually going to progress us or help us win and, and live our highest qualities of life. And I think you can even see in the data, I mean, you, you look at people who follow more traditional roles, who have more traditional values, and who are actually more leaning, you know, to the right, even on the political spectrum, they're just happier, right? They've done these studies in kids, they've done these studies, because traditional values equals what's ancestrally consistent with what we've always done, we've adapted, and we've evolved to actually really resonate with those things. And, you know, there's this narrative out there. And there's this big agenda that's trying to destroy that. And, you know, I myself and people like you guys are are trying to remind people that it's like, no, let's stay consistent with what makes us human. And that isn't situationships. That's just not always being casual. It's not that there's not a time to be 
single and, you know, to uh, work on yourself and whatnot. I talk about those things, but at the end of the day, I believe everyone's going to achieve their highest quality of life by finding someone they can be with a partner for the rest of their lives and grow a, a, an amazing family and, and have lots of kids and, and have those like traditional we, roles. Here in America have an open border bringing in all these um, military aged men suspiciously. And at the very same time, you have predominantly the left um, cheering on this demasculization of men and, and vilifying men if they are masculine. So it's like we're also at the same time not preparing ourselves if we do have a conflict here at home because because we're pushing um no men to be more like women so curious where you stand on that i mean uh would you would you say someone like andrew tate takes it too far or how do you feel about what we see happening there yeah there's a really good quote that i love and i'm drawn a blank on who originally said it, but um, it's that for every complex issue, there is a solution that is easy, simple, and wrong. I think it's clear, simple, and wrong. For every complex problem, there is a solution that is simple, clear, and wrong. And that's what I find that the, you know, let's say counter narrative or the push on, on the other side, progressives, that is often what they do is they take very complex issues and they just jump to the very clear, simple solution, right? So for example, you know, when it comes to COVID, it was like, oh, there's this airborne virus. We'll just, you know, mask everyone and lock everyone up and let's shut down the world. And it's like, well, it doesn't really work that way. There's a lot of nuance and depth to these kinds of situations. Um, and I would say the same thing about masculinity. That's what they're doing with masculinity is they look at history and they say, oh, well, men have historically oppressed women and there have been some bad apples. There's bad people out there, right? People can succumb to evil and especially when they get power, but they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So they're saying, well, the answer to, you know, women who fought to have a seat at the table for so long, which is true, the answer to that is to now destroy masculinity because masculinity must be the problem right? It must be that men are masculine and that's why they've oppressed women and, you know, cultures and other things. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not masculinity that in fact, that is actually um, just wounding and deep seated trauma and insecurities and, you know, shortcomings um, that make a man want to abuse power. It has nothing to do with testosterone or masculinity. In fact, a man is in his essence, he is living his highest potential and will actually be um, the most peaceful and contributing human for the world. If they have adequate levels of testosterone, they are embracing their masculine traits and aligning with them and also don't operate from wounds and insecurities, which we all have, you know, trauma. So I would say that. And then when it comes to the Andrew Tate thing, I mean, look, I like a lot of what Andrew Tate says. I think Andrew Tate has clips from like interviews from when he was less kind of level headed and mature. And um, he has clips that people love to take short little, you know, 10 second clips uh, that are missing a lot of context and throw them all over TikTok. And then, of course, you know, the world, you know, is up in arms and then he gets canceled from every platform. But I think that if you really look at who Andrew Tate is and, and his overall message. I'm not saying that I agree with everything he said ever, but I think his overall message is um, helping men embrace their masculinity. Um, stop, you know, um, being lazy, get your butt to the gym. Don't concern yourself with whether or not you feel like doing or some doing something, do what's required to build a life so that you can then eventually be happy and then be a, an amazing force for this world. And that's how we change this world is we build strong, healthy, masculine men and strong, healthy, beautiful, uh, feminine females.